Yesterday, the Federal Reserve broke the glass on their in case of emergency drop the rate by half a percentage point box and announced an emergency half a percentage point rate cut. Now this might sound like the most mundane thing to dedicate an entire video to since my dynamic coverage of paint drying, but it's a pretty big deal in the economic community. Generally, the Federal Reserve only raises or lowers this interest rate by a quarter of a percentage point at specific quarterly meetings. I know, riveting, right? So we're seeing all of the diehard of Fed heads posing like the screen painting right now. For them to double that quarter percentage change unscheduled, that's turning some heads and shaking some things up. First of all, a little context, Michael. When was the last time we had an emergency rate cut and by 50 basis points, which is more than the Fed might have done? Last time I can remember a 50 basis point cut was 2001 in response to, uh, well, no, 2008, the initial cut was that. The last time we had a surprise intermediate rate cut was 2008 in October of that year as we were responding to the great financial crisis. Is it just me or am I hearing the last time this happened was 2008 with alarming frequency over the last week? Today my goal is to figure out what exactly this rate cut means in the context of the problem the Fed is trying to solve, negating coronavirus fears, and then comparing that with the recent $8.3 billion deal that just passed through Congress. Now first, I want to zoom out and talk about what lowering this interest rate means out of context. What the Fed is essentially trying to do here is making saving money more expensive by lowering the interest you earn in your savings account. So take that money you have been saving and buy yourself a new TV. Or maybe invest it in stocks, just you know, don't look at what happened last week. Furthermore, it lowers interest rates on loans, so can't afford that TV? Well, perfect time to borrow some money to buy it. So essentially, yesterday the Federal Reserve gave America the same financial advice I assume MC Hammer got in the 90s. Spend all your money and then take out a loan and spend some more. They can't touch you. It's an emergency. And this brings us to the crux of the problem. Will the Federal Reserve doing this help? So a major move by the Fed today to put a floor under markets and to maybe try to get ahead of any damage out there, although uh, as a lot of people will tell you, it isn't clear that the Fed's going to be able to, to really do a lot with this except uh, help the markets. This is what makes this all so strange. The coming economic problems that will be spurred on by the coronavirus, if it gets bad, aren't directly demand problems. The issues highlighted by the first line of the Federal Reserve's press release announcing these cuts. The fundamentals of the US economy remain strong. Well that's good, so what are the economic threats? Well as the New York Times points out, while the Fed can bolster confidence and help to keep borrowing cheap, there are questions about how effective rate cuts will be in counteracting the fallout from the virus. Central banks cannot keep the disease from spreading, prevent workers from losing hours at work, or mend broken supply chains amid factory delays. It's like solely the police trying to solve the opioid epidemic. They can help, but it's not going to be the end all solution. Basically Jerome Powell is standing in a burning building and saying, don't worry everyone, we have fire insurance. Take it from the man himself, Jerome Powell, in a speech he gave on Tuesday. Monetary policy can be an effective tool to support overall economic activity. We do recognize that a rate cut will not reduce the rate of infection. It won't fix a broken supply chain. We get that. We don't think we have all the answers. But we do believe that our action will provide a meaningful boost to the economy. So how does this rate cut help? Well, its purpose is to stimulate demand in the private sector, which could do a few things. First, all Americans not quarantined, don't save your money. Why don't you go to the local mall and have a shopping spree? Shop till you drop. Sure, we're out of a lot of things because of the coronavirus rot havoc on supply chains, but that doesn't mean you can't bid up prices on the remaining items. This increase in spending would help companies recover losses from a complete loss of sales in China, because apparently a pandemic isn't great for shoppers turning up. Maybe they should cut their key interest rate by a half a percentage point. 
Of course, the overall goal here is to get interest rates of savings accounts to be so low that people's panic and instinct to save money will be overridden by a desire to spend more. Similarly, for those people who don't want to shop, you're not making money on your savings accounts anymore. Why not invest it in the stock market? If you live by the phrase, buy low, sell high, well then I have some good news for you. Unfortunately, this does not seem to have incentivized investment as, at the end of the day, the rate cut was announced that the Dow Jones Industrial Average plummeted by 785 points, or 2.94%. Now, lastly, it's a pretty great time to apply for a loan or potential refinancing because rates are so low. So take out a loan and invest in your business. Who knows, maybe demand will spike soon. This decision will play out over the long run, but judging by the stock market's fall by closing time, speculators seem wary of its effectiveness. Now, this brings us to the second piece of news that was received a bit more positively. The House just passed $8.3 billion in funding to fight the coronavirus. This political deal helped push financial markets to surge on Wednesday. The Dow Jones Industrial Average closed more than 4.5% or nearly 1,200 points up, partially on hopes that US leaders are working together to address the spreading outbreak. As much as I hate to admit it as a Fed head, this is not an economic problem, but a health and pandemic problem. Can't buy your way out of it. Well, you can, it costs $8.3 billion. But can't lower interest rates your way out of it. So there you have it, don't bring cash to a gunfight. Fortunately, as I covered last week, this $8.3 billion deal is a lot more than anybody expected. So we're now approaching this issue armed with quite the gun. Thank you and that's all I have to say about that. Hello YouTube, first I'd like to thank a commenter on last week's video who told me to pick more economic issues. This one's for you. I'd also like to thank my patrons for helping me put out my videos. If you want to support independent nonpartisan news, well put that thumb up a little quickly, looking into the overlooked, join this group of exceptional individuals by clicking on that link in the description. Also remember to subscribe and ring that bell so that freedom will continue to ring. Give me a thumbs up if you like what you saw, and lastly, as always, thank you for watching.